Hello everyone, this is Avijit Barai. I'm a consultant in emergency medicine and uh, a specialist in urgent care. We see hundreds of patients with uh, white complex tachycardia and sometimes it is very difficult to differentiate which one is VT and which one is SVT with uh, aberrancy. One of the way we can differentiate between these two distinct characters uh, or distinct conditions is Brugada criteria. In this video, we are going to show you about Brugada criteria, all that you need to know about Brugada criteria. Now, first of all, please do not get confused between Brugada syndrome and Brugada criteria. A Brugada syndrome is a condition when people can collapse, uh, may have uh, uh, VT, VF, may even die. But that is a completely different condition. That happens if there is a sodium cyanopathy. The patient can have ST elevation in V1, V2, V3 with coped pattern or maybe a saddle type ST elevation. We are not talking about that. We are talking about Brugada criteria. So what it is? A Brugada criteria is is a combination of four distinct steps that you can use to differentiate between VT and SVT. The first step is, is there any concordance present in the precordial leads that is V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. What is concordance? The concordance is the, we are talking about the concordance of the um, QRS complexes. If you carefully look at any ECG, you will see that the R wave is a positive wave. Q and S wave, they are negative wave. Whenever there is a positive wave in the QRS complex, there is a negative wave as well. So that is discordance, that is normal. So next time, if you look at any lead in the ECG, you will find that there is positive reflection, which is R wave, and negative reflection, which is either an E wave or an S wave, or sometimes both. So there is a discordance all the time, discordance of the QRS complexes. If, discord, if this discordance is absent in V1 to V6, that is the concordance, that is bad. So if you see a white QRS complex in the in the ECG and if you think oh this could be a VT carefully look at V1 to V6 if you find that those QRS complexes are either positive wave that is R wave or a negative wave which is U S wave that is possibly it is a VT according to the Brugada criteria. So that is the first step that you need to follow. If this concordance is absent, then you go for the next stage. And the next stage is, is the R to S interval more than 100 millisecond any of the precordial leads that is from V1 to V6. So what does it mean? It means from the beginning of the R wave to the end of the S wave, if it is more than 100 millisecond, then that is BT according to Brugada criteria. So let me repeat it once again. From the beginning of the R wave to the zenith or nadir of the S wave, if that is more than 2.5 a smaller square or more than 100 millisecond, that is probably a VT. So this is a second stage or second step in the Brugada criteria. If this particular step is there, if it is present, this is VT. If it is not present, let's go to the next step, which is the step number three. And in step number three, you ask, is the atrioventricular dissociation present? If it is present, this is a VT. If it is not present, possibly it is SVT with aberrancy or SVC, SVT with bundle Block. So what does it mean? You remember that in a normal ECG, there is a sinus rhythm, which means there is a P wave and a QRS complex. A P wave, QRS complex. There is a happy marriage between a P wave and the QRS complex. In VT, the, the cardiac impulse is generated in the ventricle. But still, there may be some cardiac impulse generated from the sinus uh, node. There will be no correlation between the sinus P wave and the ventricular QRS complex. So that is what atrioventricular dissociation means. There is absolutely absolutely no correlation between the P wave. Firstly, in case of VT, you will not be able to see that uh, P wave at all. Even if you can see P wave occasionally, look for the relationship between the P wave and the QRS complex. You will not find any relationship between the QRS complex and the uh, the P wave preceding to that in case of a VT. If there is a correlation, this is probably something else. For, for example, this can be an SVT with aberrancy. But again, in SVT, you will not see P wave either. It's very difficult, isn't it? The atrioventricular dissociation occurs when the P waves, which is coming from the sinus uh, node, are seen as different rate than the QRS complex. It is only present in a small percentage of the VT. It is very rare. I, I hardly see this type of condition. But if you see it, this is VT. I'll show you some animations to explain this later. The fourth step is the morphological characteristics. Now, this is hard. This is really, really hard. Let me keep it very simple. If there are two types of QRS complexes you might find. In V1, there may be an RSR pattern, which is right bundle branch block pattern, or there may be a left bundle branch block pattern, which is like a W. So let's uh, simplify this. If you find
point in v1 there is a right bundle branch block pattern that is a rsr pattern or like a m then you look for a few things number one a monophasic r wave is present what does it mean we talked about concordance right so this is a concordant qrs complex in v1 which is positive and that is a monophasic r wave or you may find a biphasic qr complex that means there will be a small q wave and a big r wave in v1 so this may be suggestive of a vt the other thing that you can find is there may be an r s r prime pattern so this is like a rabbit ear or a bunny ear here the r wave is very prominent so there is a big r wave an s wave and then a small r wave we call this a uh, left rabbit ear is bigger than the right rabbit ear so this if this is present this is a vt the other pattern that you can find is that there is a small r wave followed by a big s wave in v6 uh, that that also suggests a vt so there are three types of conditions uh, that you can find in case of a vt if the patient has got the right bundle branch block pattern in v1 these are number one a monophasic r wave number two there can be biphasic u r complex in v1 that means small q followed by a large r number three there can be a left rabbit ear is taller than the right rabbit ear r a uh, big r s wave small r pattern and the fourth category is the small r followed by a big s wave if any of these are present there is highly likely that this is a vt now let's see what happens if the patient has got a left bundle branch block in v1 again there are different types of morphology the first one is that if there is any q wave is present just a q wave nothing else what does it mean it means there is a concordant q wave a concordant negative deflection in v1 or if there is a q s wave in v6 what does it mean it means that in lead v6 there is um, there is a negative uh, wave i mean again there is a us means that this is a negative deflection and this is a concordant us in v6 the other pattern that can happen is there is a wide r wave in a lead v1 or v2 of more than 40 millisecond or more it favors the vt uh, what does it mean it means that the r wave is very prominent the other pattern that can happen is that there is a slurred or notched downstroke of the s wave in v1 or v2 they, this is also called the josephson sign or josephson wave so if you carefully look at the s wave and you find that there is a notch there or slurring pattern this is called josephson sign that goes in favor of a vt as well and last but not the least is if there is a duration of the onset of the qrs complex to the peak of the us or s wave is more than 60 millisecond that favors vt so there is a mouthful there are a lot of complicated stuff so let's uh, summarize uh, the brugara criteria once again there are four steps to look for in brugara criteria the step number one is there any concordant qrs complexes present in precordial leads such as v1 to v6 if it is present this is vt if it is not present this is sv2 with aberrancy so step two is there the r to s interval from the beginning of the r wave to the nadir of the s wave more than 100 millisecond if it is present this is vt if it is not present possibly this is vt so let's go to the next step the step number three is is there any atrioventricular dissociation if the atrioventricular dissociation is present this is vt if it is not present possibly this is svt with aberrancy to confirm that let's go to the step number four which is the morphological pattern there are two types of morphology it can be right bundle branch block in that is the rsr pattern or right bundle branch block pattern in v1, uh, v1 or left bundle branch block pattern in v1 if the right bundle branch block pattern is present this is vt if there is a morphological r wave or biphasic small q large r wave or the left rabbit ear is taller than the right rabbit ear or or in v6 the, there is a small r wave followed by a big s wave the other category of morphology pattern in v1 is the left bundle branch there are few types of condition that can happen these are if there is a presence of the q or us wave in v6 that favors a vt uh, again that is a basically concordance isn't it the other type is if there is a wide r wave in lead v1 or v2 um, that is uh, that is there is a 40 millisecond or more that favors a vt if there is josephson sign which is a slurred or notched uh, down sloping part of the s wave in v1 or v2 that also suggests the vt the duration of onset of the qrs complex to the peak of the qs or s wave more than 60 millisecond favors vt as well now what is the sensitivity and specificity of the brugara criteria the first study that was done on brugara criteria they showed that the sensitivity specificity is very high i think that was a 95 or 96 percent which is fantastic 
so you can both rule in and rule out so if the Burger criteria are fulfilled there's a high specificity which means this is VT and if it is absent this is not VT this is SV2 with aberrancy however subsequent other studies are giving a little bit of confusing uh, outcome or results having said that in real life practice I found Burger criteria very useful and I have got few other videos where I explained Burger criteria with a lot of examples please uh, feel free to watch those videos to have some uh, firm ideas about it so that's about it for today thank you very much for watching these videos and um, i look forward to seeing you soon thank you bye for now